Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. And in this lesson, we're going to learn how to continue to work with strings. In specific, we're going to learn how to search a string for what we call a substring. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's create a string, and I'll just call the string Jason, just for lack of imagination. And inside of here, I'll put, um, I love going to the grocery store. Now, actually, I hate going to the grocery store, but anyway, that's that's a simple string. Now, um, this string consists of a sequence of characters. Maybe there's, I don't know, 20, 30 characters, something like that here. Um, but we can uh, look through this string and search for what we call a substring. So, for instance, the word grocery would be a substring. That is a sequence of characters that's smaller than the whole entire thing that we have, so that's why it's called a substring. The word going is a substring. The word store is a substring. It doesn't even have to be a word. The, the concept of a substring can just be any sequence of characters. So it could be the ing. That is a very small substring of the original string. So anyway, we want to frequently, when we program, search strings for these little bitty substrings. What if you're trying to search some text for a person's name and see how many times that that happens? Or maybe you want to search uh, an address field uh, in a database to find a certain address. There's many times when you might want to search a giant string for a smaller sequence of characters. So fortunately Java provides a very cool way to do that already built in. It's one of the methods built into the string object. And so what we're going to do is first uh, we're going to print this to the screen. And the name of my string is called Jason. So if I just sort of stop here, hit save, and then hit run, what I get is the string that I have. Now what if I want to, to look for the word grocery like we said before? All right. What I'm going to do is system.out.println. JSON is the name of my string, so I want to access the methods associated with the string object. So I hit a period, and then I have lots and lots of things to look at. Now, the, the method that I care about is called index, and it's actually called index of, like this. Um, uh, or it could be index of with a string like this. So let's go ahead and do index of, and we open it up, and inside of here, I need to put my substring that I'm trying to search for. Now, strings of characters always go inside of double quotes, so let's just type the word grocery like this. All right, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm searching this uh, string for a substring, which is the word grocery. And the reason I'm doing that, or the way that I'm pulling that off, is I'm using the index of method. So what's happening is it's index of looks through my string for this substring and it returns as an integer the value which is the index of where that is in my string so in other words it's not just going to tell me if the string has the word grocery in it it's going to tell me where that word is and how it's going to tell me is starting from zero the number I'm going to get back is going to be the number uh, of the location in the string starting from zero so here's one or actually zero always count from zero 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I've counted correctly, I should get 20. So let me hit save, let me hit run, and I get the number 20 back. So this is the word grocery that it's pulling back. Now I can change this string, of course, and it'll just search the string uh, for a different substring. So store, for instance, the word store and I can hit save and hit run, I'm going to get a different number back, 28, because that, that's down here. I can change it further to the word love, save and run. Of course, I'll get a smaller number because love is very near the beginning, 0, 1, 2. That's the location of where the string starts. And as I said before, a substring doesn't have to be a word. It could be ing space t. No, at first you might think, well, that's not in here. But if you look, you have ing space and then a t. That is a valid substring of this string. Let me hit save, let me hit run, and it'll do a 9. Now if you put something here that's you know not really reasonable like this, there, there's no valid substring in there for that, then I'm going to get a negative 1. So if you ever get a negative 1 back out of this method, it means that the substring that you typed in here didn't actually exist. So either you're going to get a negative 1, which means failure, or you're going to get a number that's going to represent where in the string your substring is. Alright, so I need you to kind of uh, go off to the example and work it yourself. Play around with this yourself. Searching through strings uh, shouldn't take a lot of convincing to show you how that's useful. You might be searching through a string. Later on in your code, you might be replacing letters or replacing words in a sentence or something. So searching and replacing, very common things. Anytime you're dealing with text, 
and strings are all about text and characters. That's why we have these methods built in Java. Once you know what the methods are, very easy to use them. They're all basically used the same way, and you can add them to your toolbox so that you can have them available for any projects that you might need. So go off to the examples and work that right now.